morning, everybody, and welcome to Woking United Reformed Church. It's wonderful to be together to worship God. Things are a little bit different this morning. We're going to be sharing an all-age service, so it will all look a bit different. And we're delighted that we have a guest sharing in our service this morning, the Reverend Bob Hartman. He's a well-known storyteller who brings the stories of Scripture to life. And we're really looking forward, aren't we, to sharing some of the stories that he told us from Acts in really creative ways. You're going to love that later on in the service. So for now, let's prepare to bring this time before God. Let's pray. Loving God, it is to you that we come to bring our praise, our thanksgiving and our worship. We pray that you will speak to us today as we listen to your word once more and allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing God's praise. This is the day that the Lord has made.
Hello church family. Did you know that we have been learning to sign together for three months now? That's an amazing achievement. So thank you to everyone at home who's been joining in with me every week. But it can be really easy to forget what we've learnt when we're not practising. So I thought it would be a really good idea to record some short videos so that we can have a little think back to some of the signs we've done in previous weeks. Our first faith sign was thank you God. I'll do it a bit slower now. Thank you, God. Thank you starts at the lips and moves a short way away. And for God, as you'd imagine, we point up to the sky, but we also use our eye line. Thank you, God. everybody. Our faith sign for this week is Jesus keeps me safe. I'll do that a bit slower for you now. Jesus, so you're using your middle finger to just tap lightly on your palms to show the holes in his hands. Jesus, keeps me, so for me you use three fingers and point to yourself, point to your chest, um, I think of it like an M for me, keeps me safe. So with safe you have one flat palm in front of your body and a, a little way away from your body actually and then your other hand which is your writing hand has got this sort of cup shape and what you're doing is you're drawing your hand back across your palm and as you're doing that you're moving this arm closer to your body. So it's almost like you're holding something small and precious, maybe like a little animal against your body. Safe. I'll show you one more time. Jesus keeps me safe. Thank you for watching. Hello church family. Our next faith sign was Amen. I'll do that a little bit slower. Amen. So our hands start in a prayer position, move apart turn into fists and your hands tilt forwards so that your thumb knuckles are facing the ceiling and then you bring your hands back together again. This part of the sign means agree. Amen. Thank you for watching. We're going to sing a great song now about the fact that we have nothing to fear because we have the light of Jesus in us. Creep, creep, creep. Let's sing together with the actions, of course. Yeah?
So welcome along everybody. We're delighted to be worshipping together this morning and today we have a really special guest, Bob Hartman. Bob, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yes. yes. Bob, would it be fair to say that you haven't been to the hairdressers yet? I have not been to the hairdressers <laughs> yet. As a matter of fact, I bought myself a pair of clippers yesterday. They were on sale in Sainsbury's. I thought I might try and have a go myself. But anyway, but I thought in case I messed it up entirely, I didn't want to do it before we did this. So I have to say that I'm I'm the expert at this because uh, for Christian Aid Week, I shaved off Justin's hair, which was much longer than it is now. Wow. Having never used a pair of clippers before in my life, um, yeah. and we did we did it live after our church service, and, and we raised like seven seven thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, oh my word. And this is this is him growing back after um well after, since May after about two and a half months. Yeah. This is, yeah. Wow, you've done very well. Yeah. yeah, it grows back fast. Actually, I've been surprised at how yeah. quick. But I was li literally down to a number one all over yeah. before that. I've also That's been amazing. trying this out as well, Bob, yeah. just in the last couple of weeks. Just not, to see if he can. Not sure how long it's going to stick around, but we'll see. I'm rubbish at that. I mean, anytime <laughs> I've tried, it's been terrible. So I'm just going you know, to let the hair do the thing. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about yourself, Bob, because many people won't necessarily know who you are, but um, you've been involved in um, children and youth ministry for a long time, writing, performing, um, all kinds of resources out there. So just give us a little background to, to Bob Hartman, if you would. Yeah, I, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm a, I guess I'm a writer, mostly for children, although I've done some adult stuff as well, and, and a storyteller, you know. So um, I started out as a pastor and uh, did sort of a theological you know, degree. Uh, and then gradually just kind of got really intrigued by the whole idea of storytelling. So started putting my hand to retelling Bible stories and then sent them off to Lion Publishing at one point. And, you know, would you please consider turning this into a book? And they were like, yeah, right. and, you know, and it just kind of went from there. So I've rewritten loads and loads of Bible stories, not all of them, but a lot <laughs> over the years. <laughs> And as you say, you know, I go to churches and schools and whatnot and, uh, you know, tell them live there. We've, uh, we've used lots and lots of your resources in our church services over the years. This is some of our stash of, of your books that we keep on our shelves here. So we thank you for those and thank you for your time with us today. And, and a number of, um, of our folk have been to Spring Harvest over the years and obviously see you leading the big star and also often uh, engaging with, you know, some of the teaching later on and, um, bringing some of your sketches and dramas and things to life uh, in the after hours as well. So, so um, I, I I just think that um, churches are a great place to teach stories in different ways, aren't they? And, and they are. Very often we kind of do. We just do. It's just about the sermon. It's just about the singing. But actually, there's all kinds of creative ways to bring to bring these stories alive. And and you've been doing that for a long time now, Bob. Um, we 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 were going to have you um, leading our theme. Uh, at our family weekend in October, which we were going to be sharing yeah. with High Cross Camberley. Um, uh, but w so we're really sad that obviously we're having to postpone that um, particular yeah. uh, family weekend this year, but we're hoping to make it happen next year, um, yeah. circumstances allowing. So, uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that. That'd be great. No, no. I mean, it's been great fun. As you say, over the years, doing the different events and, and hopefully, I suppose, providing a bit of, a, of an example, a model of how you can tell the stories. And, and how you can use your imagination to do that and to bring them to life. And when you think, I mean, you know, the, the, the bulk of the Bible is, is narrative, isn't it? So to actually tell the stories and to tell them well is kind of doing what God says in Psalm 78, isn't it? To pass his story to the next generation. And that's kind of what I hope I'm all about. Yeah, well, we've been engaging with some great stories from scripture just lately in our church family. We've been journeying through the book of Acts. Um, so we began the week before Pentecost and, and we've just gone on from there and we have loved exploring these amazing stories. Acts is such a page turner. It is. We've been telling the stories through uh, the use of puppets and all sorts of other fun things. Um, do you love the book of Acts? Oh, I, 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 yes, absolutely. And what really makes me sad in some respects is that there actually isn't a decent children's like set of retellings about the book of Acts. I mean, I did a set of retellings with uh, Conrad Gemf, you know Conrad yeah, from LXP. Conrad. He and I did uh, a book about Paul together. So we were able to retell all those stories from the book of Acts and, you know, shed a little light on um, uh, the letters as well, the epistles as well. But it really isn't like, you know, the Lion Storyteller book of Acts or any really book of Acts. And I think that's such a shame because as you say, it's a phenomenal book. 
and great stuff happens. So yeah, I love the book of Acts. We've, we've been finding it's provided very fertile material for our puppet sketches each week, Bob. Um, we, we haven't got one for this week, but um, we, every week we've been telling the story of Acts through the book of puppets. And there's so many action stories in there, you know, imprisonments, oh, yeah. earthquakes, shipwrecks. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic for that kind of thing. So it's yeah. all happening, you know, yeah. yeah. And one of the things we've, we found and one of the reasons we chose the Book of Acts is that we, we believe it speaks powerfully into this time that we're living in at the moment. I mean, what does it mean to be church at the moment? We're all so confused and um, everything that we know and hold dear um, has, has just kind of been thrown up in the air. And, and so yeah. all of us as, as churches are grappling with well, what does it mean to be the body of Christ at the moment in these circumstances? And we felt drawn to go back to the book of Acts to see where it all began. Um, in such difficult circumstances, those apostles yeah. managed to spread the word um, far and wide. And of course, it was all because they began with the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit in them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they did it without Zoom. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the phenomenal thing, isn't it? And you're absolutely right. You know, I mean, God goes to work. They give God room to work in their lives and the most phenomenal things happen, you know, and they create these fantastic communities, which, which I think is the other really important thing to consider in light of our current situation. And I think a lot of people are recognizing the importance of, local community, about people working together right where they are um, to make a difference. And, and I hope that that's the kind of thing that's going to carry on once things go back more like to normal. Yeah. Well, should we tell some stories? Yeah. Well, we, yes. we wanted to bring you on, Bob, so we could we could hear a few stories and a few of the ways. I know that you've got a new book that's come out during lockdown, uh, which is mm -hmm. actually based on the story of uh, the Philippian jailer and the earthquake, which we did in our puppets recently. So we, we're going to get to that. Um, but there was one that I, uh, that I like uh, that's in one of your books. Um, it's called Eutychus Yawned. It's a story we haven't yet reached in the Book of Acts. I think it comes up in Acts 20. And uh, it's a scenario that some people may be familiar with, falling asleep <laughs> during a sermon. Um, <laughs> so, so has anyone ever fallen asleep during your sermons, Bob? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 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 absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, think and, and, Every preacher's probably experienced that, sure. Well, I certainly have, absolutely. So sometimes I think I might do a head count. <laughs> <laughs> that one's nodding off. Yeah. That one's nodding off you know? The lovely thing about, of course, doing, it, doing this, these talks online these days is that you can't tell who's falling asleep and who isn't. You know? absolutely. Half of yeah. them are in their jammies anyway, but, you know. Yeah. Though in some ways it's harder, to, I think, to probably preach to a camera rather than to a, an actual congregation mm -hmm. it's it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a different experience doing it that way but it is much. i mean because yeah, you've got no feedback you know and with the yeah. storytelling of course feedback's important so i'm glad you guys are there you know in order to do a little feed, feeding back <laughs> yeah well it's not just us we're going to bring the children in as well come on guys come and Brilliant. Join, come and join in and we'll enjoy the story of Eutychus now it's going to have to duck a bit all right. Okay, tell All, me right. Mom. All right. Bob's going to tell us the story. Here we go. I'm going to meet us, Bob, so we just hear you. Okay, here we go. And here's the deal, guys. Uh, oh, I can see every head. That's perfect. The only action that you have to do in this story is yawn. All right? I can do that. But, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So, like a really good yawn. And there's going to be a load of yawning. Okay. okay. Yes, there's a hand up there. You have a question? No, he's just putting his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Eutychus yawn. Oh, very good. There we go. It had been a long day. He'd risen early and done his chores, then run himself ragged, playing with his mates. But now it was late, really, really late. Eutychus yawned and yawned. Very nice. It's not that he was bored. It was Paul, after all, who was talking. Paul, who had persecuted the followers of Jesus. Paul, who had met Jesus himself in a blinding vision on the road and had come to follow him, too. Paul, who had traveled the world telling everyone about Jesus' life and death and resurrection and doing miracles in his name. It was Paul who was talking. But he'd been talking for a very long time. <laughs> and it was nearly midnight. Eurekus yawn <laughs> and yawn <laughs> and yawn. <laughs> the smoke from 
the lamps didn't help. It burned his eyes and made him drowsy. So we climbed onto the windowsill of an open window, perched three stories <laughs> above the street below to get a little air. And still, Paul kept talking. Eutychus yawned. Yeah. And yawned. Yeah. <laughs> and yawned. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. And yawned. Yeah. And then he stopped yawning and started snoring. Can we have a little of that? <laughs> Very nice. And sleeping. He slumped and then slipped off the sill. Don't do that at home and fell out of the window to the ground below. Yeah, very good. Ah! <laughs> People screamed. Indeed, they did. Paul stopped talking. That's the way to get the preacher to stop. And everyone raced down the three flights of stairs to the street below. He's dead, someone shouted. But Paul scooped him up in his arms and said, different. Don't be alarmed, he said. The boy's alive. And so he was. Some of the people went back upstairs and Paul carried on with his talk. He didn't finish until daybreak. And the rest of the people, they took Eutychus home and made sure he got to bed. You're lucky to be alive, he said. It's a good thing Paul was there. And Eutychus nodded. And Eutychus smiled. And Eutychus yawned. Yeah. And yawned. Yeah. <laughs> And yawn, yeah. and yawn, yeah. and fell safely back to sleep. The end. <laughs> well done, gang. Good participating there. It makes all the difference in the world when you got a good audience. Well, it's great. It's great. I mean, Brilliant. that's Thank that's you. sort of a story that not many people actually know of. It's just a it's just a brief little, a little interlude, interlude, really, yeah. in the book. It of is. Acts. It's, it's great fun, isn't it? It's sort of it goes to show that we're all human uh, in a way that, you know, even with the great apostle, apostle Paul, <laughs> someone still <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> no, still his, um, back there. no, it's still yawning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love this is what oh. I actually like about the book of Acts is that. As, as much as you have all the great adventures, but, and it's kind of like the highlights reel, isn't it, of the early church, yeah. the kind of great moments in, in the early church. Um, there's also a lot of very human stories. So we did yeah. um, a few weeks ago the fact that um, the church couldn't agree on whether non-Jewish people who became Christians had to go through all the Jewish rituals in advance um, right. to, be, to become followers of Jesus. And so they brought this council together and, and debated it and eventually said, no, we're not going to require people to, to, to go jump through all those hoops. But then just after that, Paul and Barnabas have a massive Barney and a falling out and yep. uh, they go their separate ways and they're in a real huff with each other, it, it looks like. Um, and it's just, it just reminds you that, you know, the issues around people getting on, churches sort of struggling to come to agreement on things, it's been around from the start. And to me, that's actually a bit of an encouragement that actually whatever problems we're going through, uh, they've always been there from the start and, and, and God's still working through it all and, and part of it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, that's, as you say, that's the great thing about doing the book of Acts, you know, with kind of all of the ups and the downs and people just being people, it would be really interesting to know, you know, why Luke chose to include the Ludica story. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's, a, there's a miracle there, sure. You know, you don't fall three, three flights and survive usually. So, you know, you know, God does some amazing things there. But it's just, you know, that particular story. I mean, was there some personal thing going on there? You know, I mean, did he particularly know the family? And that sort of a thing. It, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell us another story, Bob? Because... Yeah. Um, You've show us the, the, the book cover actually, because this has just come out recently. It has. The Prisoners, the Earthquake, and the Midnight Song. So tell us what this book is all about. So that's about the story of the Philippian jailer. And um, I I this this illustrator, I, I asked specifically to work with the good book company because I love what she does. Um, I'll show you some pictures on the inside. Sounds a really important part of this story as well. So it's what she tries to do is kind of bring the sounds to life. 
So you've got, you know, the jailer snoring there at the beginning and then the town. She's a wonderful, wonderful illustrator. You've got this kind of rainbowy stuff. This is Paul and um, Silas's um, song, basically floating through the, the prison. Really beautifully done. And then when you get the earthquake, it's just terrific because she's got like, you know, the building and there's dinosaur bones very underneath there and this wow. all kinds of things. That, she, she is absolutely terrific. And, um, you know, I asked, I asked specifically, and of course I work with her. So anyway, they said yes. And um, yeah, the book's a result. So, do you guys remember when we did the story of the Philippian jailer? We had to use an old stair gate as our jail. And oh, wonderful. We opened it, didn't we? And so that Paul Everyone and Silas shaken. could escape. Yeah. And who played the jailer? Which one of you was the jailer? Uh, you. It wasn't me. I was telling no. the story. Oh. They can't remember. Grace, one of them was Grace, the jailer. It was Grace. Grace, Grace was the jailer. <laughs> nice. nice. Right. Should nice. we hear the story again? They stop then? you in time. You didn't have to kill yourself in the end. They stopped no, you. No, no, fortunately. You're there with us, so, you know, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should we hear the story Everything again, then? Yeah. yeah. So, so that yeah. wasn't with puppets. That was with live people. No, that was with puppets. Those puppets, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, again, there's going to be actions for you guys to do. So you've done the snoring already. So we're going to go. Uh, uh. Can we do that together? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Then they do sing this song. So what I did was I took a bit of that song that is in Philippians. Uh, Let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's a terrible tune. But anyway, we'll just say it. We'll go. Let every tongue, every tongue confess, confess that, that Jesus Christ, Christ is, Lord. is Lord. Perfect. Okay, comes right from the end of that hymn. Then we're going to kind of do a during the earthquakes. So here we go. Uh, then we're going to, oh, then we're going to cry. We're going to go, oh, do that. Then, then we're going to pretend to take our sword out of our scabbard and we're going to go, yep, okay. And there's going to be some shouting, but, but we'll get to there when we get there. Okay, okay. are you ready? Here we go. Listen, do you hear it? A sound like someone sawing logs. A sound coming from a prison, a prison in Philippi. The jailer is snoring. He's fast asleep and his prisoners are all safely locked up for the night. There's another sound. Do you hear it? It's coming from the very middle of the prison the place from which no one escapes. And it's coming from two of the prisoners. Listen closely. Are they moaning and groaning? Oh, they could be. Their backs are bruised with the beating they were given. Their feet are locked up in stocks. But that's not it. Listen again. Are they complaining? <laughs> they could be. They really shouldn't be there, you see. They were only helping a slave girl they met while walking through Philippi. They were helping her through the power of Jesus, who died so we can be forgiven, who came back from the dead so we can live forever, and who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him as our king. But our masters got angry and had them thrown in jail. Listen once more. Listen closely. Do you hear it? A simple tune, a set of words. They're singing. Let every, every tongue, tongue confess, confess that, that Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. That's what they're doing. Singing songs of praise to God. And every other prisoner in the jail is listening to them. Their names are Paul and Silas. And they have come to Philippi to tell everyone they're about Jesus. Who died so we can be forgiven. Who came back from the dead so we can live forever. And who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him as our king. And even though they don't deserve to be in jail, they trust God. And they're taking the chance to tell the prisoners all about him. Hang on. Do you hear it? There's a, another sound. A rumbling sound. A rumbling sound. A sound from deep beneath the prison. A sound rising up from the ground. A sound like a shouting chorus to their song. It's an earthquake. Let's go. Boom. 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 And it shakes the walls and the floors and it knocks down the doors off their hinges and the locks from off their stocks. And now every prisoner is free. But then listen, do you hear it? The sharp scraping sound of a sword being drawn from its scabbard. 
It's the tailor's sword. He's wide awake now. And do you hear it? He's crying. Why is he crying? You see, if the jailer's prisoners escape, the reason he's crying is that he has to die. That's the oh. law in Philippi. And when he sees the doors thrown open, he's sure that all the prisoners are gone. So he takes his sword to take his own life. And all he can think of is how he will miss his wife and his son and his daughter. But before he can do that, there is another sound. Listen, someone is shouting, don't hurt yourself. Don't, don't hurt, hurt yourself. yourself. We're all still here. We're all, We're all still, still here. here. The kid can hardly believe it. So he grabs a torch and picks his way through the rubble to the middle of the prison to see for himself. And when he realizes that all the prisoners are indeed still there, he falls down at the feet of Paul and Silas. There's something different, something special about these men. These foreigners who have come to Philippi with their stories about Jesus. So the jailer leads them out of the prison. And listen, he has a question for them. What must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas have an answer. Believe in the Lord Jesus. That's how you'll be saved, you and everyone who lives in your house. Then they tell the jailer all about Jesus, who died so we can be forgiven, who came back from the dead so we can live forever, and who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him as our king. And everyone in his house listens to his wife, his daughter, his son, and his servants. And listen, do you hear it? The splishing, the splashing, and we go whoosh, whoosh. Here we go. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's water. The jailer washes Paul and Silas's wounds. And then Paul and Silas baptize the jailer in water. And everyone in his household too. Then they all sit down for a tasty meal. And listen, do you hear it? A simple tune, a set of words they're singing. Let every, every tongue, tongue confess, confess that, that Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is Lord. Lord. Not just Paul and Silas, but the jailer and everyone else in his house. They're singing and praising God because they now all believe in Jesus. And listen, do you hear it? The sound of voices, millions of voices speaking in different languages all around the world, in cities and towns in farms and villages, in shops and factories, and yes, in prisons as well. People telling other people about Jesus and how they can be saved. The same Jesus and the same Holy Spirit that Paul and Silas told the jailer about. And listen, do you know what you can do? You can tell people about Jesus too. The end. Hey. <laughs> Wow. Well done. Thank you, Bob. That was great. Really fun. No, thank you guys yeah. for helping out. Yeah, it was great. Brilliant story. So um, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because we are, they sometimes say that we're the next chapter of the book of Acts, that that yeah. story didn't finish. It continues with us today. But we're living through weird times at the moment, aren't we? What, what are your thoughts on, on how we can be a Paul and a Silas in these times, which on the face of it seemed, you know, really difficult and tough, but yet they were somehow able to praise God and see God work, even in, you know, even when they were locked up in a prison, having just been beaten. What, what, yeah. what lessons can we draw from them and, and the book of Acts as we, as we go out into the world ourselves? I think that it starts with just that fundamental hope that they had that what they believed about Jesus was true, mm. you know? Um, when you look at the preaching of the early church, there is just this confidence that Jesus was the answer to all that the Jewish nation had hoped for and all that God planned to do. And the fact that he'd come back from dead, the dead and been exalted to the Father, which is, which is at the heart of their preaching. It's really interesting. I mean, it's the, you know, it's the resurrection and the ascension that form a huge part of what they talk about. This fact that you know, Jesus is for real and Jesus makes a difference when we follow him. Um, I think it's that fundamental confidence and I think confidence is the word. It's confidence and hope that this is true. And we will, we will strive to build our lives and build our communities around it. And like I said before, I think in a time where 
we're kind of falling back on local communities. This is an opportunity for churches really to be what Paul and Silas were in that situation. I mean, they were the only Christians in the room, you know, when that happened. And yet, you know, there was something phenomenal, A, about the way they responded to being set free and they didn't just run for doors, <laughs> and B, the fact that they um, were willing to attest to their faith, you know, through all of that, and to show compassion, you know, on the jailer and his family, etc. Yeah. So I think just, you know, believe what we're called to believe and be who we're called to be, you know, it's, it's really sort of simple stuff, you know. I mean, frankly, Justin, it's what I like about what you do on the unbelievable thing, because in a sense, it always keeps coming back to that, doesn't it? You know, this is what we believe and this is who we are. And if we just kind of continue to trust in that and live that way, then, you know, God will continue to work through us. Yeah, it's a it's a such a powerful message, isn't it? That we can be confident in who we are, in whose we are, in the gospel that we have to proclaim, and also that we don't have to figure everything out. That God is no. always at work before us, um, ahead of us, within us, in ways that we don't even know. The Holy Spirit is powerfully at work, and um, yeah. and actually, we're excited to see what God's going to do in this time. We just yeah. have to keep on joining in and trying to keep up. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, that's what they did. In a sense, you know, it's, there's almost this sense, well, there's a very real sense, isn't there, that the Holy Spirit was going before them, you yeah. know, the vision, Paul's vision will come, you know, come across the water, come to Europe, and here's what I want you to do, and then go here and go there. It was that willingness to trust what the Holy Spirit, Spirit did and what he said. That, that made a difference too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Bob, we wondered if, um, just as we draw our time together to a close, whether you might pray um, for us and for, for the work of the church and what the spirit is doing at this time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for Jesus who died so we could be forgiven and came back from the dead to guarantee our future and uh, who sent his Holy Spirit so we can follow him. Lord, we thank you for what, uh, what these guys are doing. Um, just proclaiming your message, you know, every morning, every Sunday morning from, from their home in Woking. And Lord, we just ask your continued blessing on them as they do that and explore ways to do it more creatively and together as a family to share who you are, not only with one another, but with their community. So bless them, we pray. And help us all, we pray, because Lord, um, we're all looking for ways to do this more honestly and um, to do it more realistically and to just witness to your power and your love not only through what we say, but through how we live in our communities. So help us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And loving God, we thank you for Bob and for the gift that you have placed in him to share the stories of your word in scripture and to tell them in ways which bring them alive and show how relevant they are to our lives today. We pray your blessing on him and all he does in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Oh, that was good wasn't it we it was great thank you so much bob Jesus. that was a real real treat and um and we we look forward to catching up with you at some point in the future um absolutely we can make this family weekend happen next year and it'll be great fun to to have you leading the theme when we do that'd that. be brilliant
So now as our time of worship comes to an end, may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you in this moment and forevermore. Amen. We're not having our coffee Zoom time this morning, but there is an opportunity to pray together now. If you'd like to join my colleague, David, he'd be delighted to meet you on the prayer Zoom. And the link is at the top of the Facebook page. If you'd like to have some time together praying with others, and you'd be very welcome in that space right now. We, the Briley family, will be back live from our front room next week, and we really look forward to worshipping with you. God bless you all.